dance right onto it. Yeah. Is there anyone else who's doing it to announce their name? Please do so if you want to. So, Mr. Erica Amiri, I think that's your name, right? Has I always said that right? Hello? Um, can you get, uh, can well, you have hey, a question? I, no, I was just going to say I was in, I, I, my mom talks about him all the time. I just kind of, over the years, uh, well, never paid attention. But, uh, man, I, I found it on YouTube, and uh, the, first, uh, the first prayer that I came across, I hit on it. Uh, Wow, oh. was blown away with the uh, way how it had it delivery. I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank you. And then I watched a few. Others. I wonder which video that was. Do you remember? By any chance? Um, I, 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 I do. I think it was uh, three years ago. Uh, video and this in particular. You know, I was reading to the prayers and, and this in particular one that I decided to stop on had to do with. Um, he would say a prayer for me about my enemies and. Um, the few things that he first said, uh, I, I mean, were, I was like, whoa, whoa he's right. Was, uh, you know, uh, Christians are crippled by the lack of knowledge. Um, yeah. and, and he's right. I, there were so many things that I don't know about prayer in 16 minutes. Getting a delivery, I was just, I couldn't write fast enough about, you know, the powers we have in prayer. I mean, I, there's just so many things I don't know. And, and prayer was a big one. And then I believe the second one that I watched, um, this one had to do with the, um, ooh, the, the battlefield of the mind. Um, actually, that's I think it's Joyce Meyer, but it had to do with the uh, 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 opening into the mind, plunging uh, 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 into the heart uh, to, to, to cause obedience, uh, to, to turn, turn, turn towards God. And I found that one just deep, right? Those were the, the two that I was most impressed with. Most impressed. Good. All right. Um, during the afternoon session, when we had meditation at the altar, the title of that broadcast, it says, somebody wants to make you rich. Mary, uh, our Mary, the Mary of our mission, she stood in the midst of her brethren and read to us the psalm for the sacred scriptures service reading for today. Out of it, we found the most important things that was being spoken about was how glorious and majestic is the works, W-O-R-K-S, the works of God. Mm. This evening we want to continue on part two of it. Many of us will have been, will have become very wealthy people. One of the things that I do not seem to like is when we talk about wealth, riches, prosperity, some people said, well, I don't want to be wealthy. I don't want to be rich. I don't really think I need money. That is an attitude of caving in to disillusionment. It's an attitude of not wanting to face the existential path of your well-being on earth. I just dictated 
three things to Vivian before we came into the into the program for tonight. The desire when I when I start speaking about God, I'm not speaking about him based on the fact. Attention, someone needs to mute your phone. Everyone, double check and mute your phone. I am not talking about God based on the fact that somebody showed me who God is. It is based on the fact that either I discovered God for myself or God came to visit me. That is why I choose not to follow any one system or pattern of doing anything except when it comes to science, technology, medicine, and also when it comes to finances, that is investments. Somebody wants to make you rich is true. Somebody wants to make you rich. If you are willing to let somebody make you rich, you will become very, very rich. Mary, I've not heard your voice here, nor Lizzie. Where are those two important yes, people? Here. Okay. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. Leo, now, welcome to the program. Melissa, welcome. Welcome. One of the reasons, among other reasons, why we are afraid of allowing people into our lives is because of outrageous outstanding experiences of disappointments by people. For example, like myself, my mother's brother always wanted me to be a doctor, a medical doctor. He and my father introduced me to pharmacy. To the art of simple cure. Christina? Welcome. The yeah. same man also said to me, if being a medical doctor is not your area, I'm going to train you to be a lawyer so that you can protect the property, the estate of the family. That's my mother's uh, brother. The year that I finished high school, suddenly somebody came from the bigger city, a different state, in the night. I ran to my father and I said to my father, the person who is coming to our home, my father said, what? I said, there is somebody who is gonna show up in our home. They are coming to tell you that my uncle is dead. My father said, don't say that kind of thing. I said, dad, he's passed away. My father said, how do you know? I said, I know. What speaks to me? My father said, who speaks to you? I said, well, daddy, you know that God speaks to me personally. You know that he allows me to eavesdrops drops on things that 
I don't have no knowledge about. Few minutes later, somebody came to our home and my father put everybody out. And they announced exactly what I told him. That same night, my father left to go to the city. He summoned his, his, uh, his, uh, his people and they choose among them those who were to go. He didn't say anything to anybody. My father did not come back to tell me about the thing, but something like a television opened before me and I was watching what they were doing, even though I wasn't there. And I went and I talked with my mom. And I told my mom, you will be told about this. I want you to be strong and I want you to know that I'll be there for you. Little did my father and mother know that the death of my mother's brother hit me harder than all of them. He was the wealthiest person from my mother's town. He wasn't the most educated person, but he was the most intelligent, sensible, and the most street smart guy who traded with Americans, with the Chinese, with the Japanese, with the Koreans, and with the English. Even though he didn't go to college, I'm not sure whether he went to high school. And yet, he knew so much about medicine, he knew so much about importing food, motorbikes, wrist watches, perfumes, clothing lines, cosmetics, all this. Because just amazing. Then my father also left too. My father also passed away a few months later. Then there was my mother's another brother, another uncle of mine who was a very kind man. He wasn't a Christian and he told me things that I am now in 2021 going to apply because he told me a time is going to come that you are going to apply what I'm telling you now. Whenever I come to the village, he will send for me and he will cook for me. He had a wife, but he never allowed the wives to feed me. He always go to cook for me personally. I didn't know why. And then he will sit me down and he will tell me things. He told me that God doesn't like lazy people. Early in the morning, he will knock at the door of our home. He didn't look for any of my brothers or sisters, always me. And he will tell me, this will be like around six o'clock. It's still dark. He's already in our home and he will call me and he will say, get up, come brush your teeth. I'm waiting for you. I give you five minutes. You're going with me for either hunting or you're going with me to farming. He had a huge farm, huge one, huge cocoa, cocoa plantation, huge palm fruit plantation. I began to learn from the man what it means to be rich and how to manage wealth. He made me document his estates, his land. By the time that I was finishing seminary studies, 
he was dead. I can go on counting people whom I depended on or who wanted to help me and I lost them to death. So sometimes it becomes very difficult for I or for you to depend on people because of the tragedy of nature. People will go back to the soil. People will go back from where they come from, nature. People will go back to heaven. People will be on their way to hell depending on, I mean for us Christians, what they what decisions they've made in life. I still remember the last one I told you about. The last one. Inro Amuduma. That's his name. He always said to me, God will never give you food. But God has put the food out there. You go to find it. He's the one who told me that the reason why he doesn't go to church is because church people believe that God is coming to give them money and God is coming to give them food, that he doesn't believe in it. And I began to balance both sides. Please, can you tell anybody who is on the line not to sleep? I have a law a principle in our mission. If you have a sleeping problem, make sure you walk around. You grab a cup of tea, you grab a cup of coffee and walk around. Don't sit. It is a sin against God to come to his presence to sleep or even to go to a conference where you are going to learn something and pick something to go and apply. Let's continue. Mm -hmm. Many people, you've, you've been abused and used. So it becomes difficult to trust any human being to make you rich. Some of you, you've prayed and prayed and prayed Sometimes you've trusted in pastors and preachers and evangelists and your denomination. It didn't work out. You didn't get nothing out of it. So you choose not to trust in any human being's ability to make you rich. If you've been abused, beaten, physically beaten, you've gone through so much quarrel, or people have promised you the great and the good life, and then they turn their back on you. It's hard when somebody comes along to show you love, to, to help put you together for you to truly be open to it. It's very difficult. This is the reason why when you meet people who have gone through abused situation, disappointment, they trusted somebody so much, they are women who trust their lovers or trust their husband so strongly and then only for them to be disappointed by that same person. So loving becomes difficult. Or you invested your money into a particular business and then the, 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 the business goes bankrupt and you didn't get your money back, very difficult. 
some of the reasons why you see people don't believe in 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 democracy or in leadership let's say leadership the way it is constitutionally put together is because it's a, it's another form of business many a times leaders do not deliver they are just there to sign papers and they don't know what the heck they are doing so it's difficult to believe or to trust leaders tonight i have good news for you somebody truly wants to make you rich i choose i personally choose that there is something i'm gonna do that will make me be attracted to and that will make good people nice people wealthy people rich people to be attracted to me decent people people of character who are going to contribute something to make my life rich there's something I'm willing to do and it is also the same with God what are you willing to do with God for God to step out to connect you to riches to make you rich because God do not just connect you to riches or, or open opportunities for you he also personally makes people rich that I know for sure <sighs> This is what this is what you should do. Decide that from now on you are going to focus your mind on nice things, on the good side of life. Make make up your mind that you are going to focus your your life and your mind only on the good side of life that's number one let me repeat it please somebody should leave your phone leave your phone where it is and then step a little bit so that you don't breathe into it please listen very carefully to what i'm what what i'm about to say i'm repeating something make sure that you make that decision that you are going to focus your mind on only the good side of life and the nice side of life if you want god to make you rich and you want decent good human beings when we say good, we mean good to the last drop. Not people who will be good to you sometimes and sometimes they are not. No. Be ready to focus your mind only on the good side of life. Number two, be willing to focus your life. See, the first one was be willing to focus your mind on the good side of life. Your mind very important on only the good side of life number two be willing to focus your life on beautiful things be willing to focus your life on beautiful things only number three choose to enjoy good experiences and good memories good experiences and good memories 
and any human being or event that will not allow you to focus your mind on the good the good side of life or to focus your life on the good things you don't need it anybody or any event that will not allow you to have good experiences to enjoy good experiences and have good memories you have to let it go that's just it let me tell you more there is warfare in life physical war people die there is death there is pain there is suffering there is divorce there is there are breakups there are shootings robberies people do sell drugs to destroy people people do pimp men and women to make money People do abuse people and use people. People make money out of warfare. Politicians and pastors lie. Evil business people manipulate people and lie about it in order to make money. I'll give you an example with AT&T. If you have services with AT&T, like you have at and Direct TV or you have other at and uh, uh, services in your home once in a while they will call you to give you an offer of an iPhone or Samsung or other forms of phone and they will tell you how cheap it's going to be You'll be paying like five bucks a month. You'll be paying this and that. You don't need another phone. But it sounds so good. But they fail to tell you that it's going to be for the next three years. Um, if you are not smart enough and street smart, for that matter, that you bring out your calculator and calculate how much all this is going to be plus tax because they will not tell you the fees and the charges if there is no fee there is charges if there are no charges there is fees plus the tax federal and states and sometimes municipality municipal taxes turn on service to turn the service on for you by the time that you finish paying for that three years You've paid for at least two, three, four phones like that. And then if you try to cancel it, you are going to pay for the full, they are going to tell you what they didn't tell you of the actual cost of it. Most businesses thrive on not seeking clarity. They thrive. For example, you don't need credit card, but they will talk you into it. Tell you you don't need to worry about this. It helps build your credit. Get the loan. Get the, get the loan. Get the money. And you do not, first of all, you should sit down and ask yourself, am I making enough money as to cover this? Do I have enough money that will cover credit card? They don't tell you that. Because they thrive on knowing that you will make late payments. You are going to miss some payments. Tragedies will happen in your life and family or people that you care about. And with that, you won't be able to pay. So,
so you become a slave to them sometimes it lasts for a very long time <sighs> if you've gone through excruciating financial tragedy it's hard when somebody comes along and said somebody want to make you rich or God wants to make you rich it's hard to believe it choose if you if you are willing to open your life to what I've spoken about how where your mind should be focused your life should be focused seeking good experiences seeking good enjoying good memories I was telling Leona a week ago about when she came to our first international convention in Las Vegas what she brought for me I also talked to her about our second convention in Wichita, Kansas and what she brought for me when we had another one a small circle of friends meeting and then we opened it up to the public in Baltimore, Maryland she came to all of them she flew to all of them Marjorie did come to the one in Baltimore I choose to cherish such experiences of people being there to give me support for example Marjorie came to be in charge of the ministry products she brought them out of the box and arranged them and was the one collecting money and putting in orders There are people that I will never trust with certain part of my life because I trusted them before and at the time that I needed them the most to execute what they are trained to do, they were not there. So I now choose to have quality over quantity. And then I choose not to not to throw those people away but to discover where they are strongest and work with them within that there are people who cannot work with the team there are people who are threatened by two or three more people working with them so i now choose to do business with people from the perspective of where their strength is biggest i choose to enjoy the beautiful side of life and not to be talking about the bad things of life I choose to kill experiences and memories that will make me to be stressed and depressed. I choose to say no to people, families, class, associations who are not decent and who uses people instead of service to people i choose to avoid that i remember when anthony Bourdain was asked about a certain person 
what is his opinion, his view on this person. And Anthony Bourdain said, he's very offensive. His character and his way of life is very, very offensive. That, that's my language. And the person truly was. I choose not to do business with people who are very offensive like. When you are in their presence, you are actually on the edge of falling into a bit dark, a big dark cave. You don't feel free. I choose not to deal with those kind of people. I choose to surround myself with people who, no matter how rich they are, are simple to approach and enjoy the nice things of life. Sometimes on my day off, I will spend a few hours watching Japanese television because outside European and American culture, the other culture I like in the world is Japanese culture. Go and look at the life of Japanese scientists, politicians, ambassadors, professors of different branches of studies. Go and look at painters, fashion designers. There is not one Japanese person of high class and privilege that doesn't have a hobby. I was watching Professor Agatha who is working with regenerative who deals with regenerative medicine or regenerative biology. Mary, I was discussing that with Adrina, your daughter, two days ago. Yeah. I was yeah. discussing with Adrina about regenerative medicine and regenerative um, biology. Because I've told her that I want her to go into that so that she can transfer that stretch into medical school. That's brilliant. Thank you. That same Japanese professor is also a soccer coach. Show me one Japanese prime minister that does not play an instrument of music, whether a saxophone, whether a, a, a trumpet, a drum. They are interested in music from rock and roll to pop. They are outgoing people. They are always into sports. They are in burning houses. They are climbing a mountain. They are traveling. They learn. So when they become rich, when they have acquired a skill, Samantha, are you listening? Where are you? Good. When they become novelists, they become professors of literature, they will step out of that to acquire a second skill a third skill and then a great hobby and that is what has made Japanese culture one of the best cultures in the world you you saw on um on the 4th of July last year I think it was the Japanese ambassador or president who was playing the American national anthem with a musical instrument on CNN. You saw a Japanese prime minister came to America during the days of George Bush Jr. and he is interested, while George Bush Jr. is interested in doing all these uh, presidential leadership things, straight face, not laughing, all of that, the Japanese prime minister wanted to go to, um, what do you call, where, where Elvis Presley is buried in, is it in Tennessee or where? Graceland. The Japanese Prime Minister want to go to Graceland. And then, unwillingly, 
George Bush Jr., our own president, former president, went with him to Graceland to Elvis Presley place. And Japanese Prime Minister was singing Elvis Presley's music before the entire world, like a little boy. And George Bush's mouth opened and was just looking. And the man was enjoying himself. And that is also the reason why Japanese people, they are among the people that live the longest. And they are so excited about, let me tell you, they are so excited about toys, pets. They are so excited about the newest gadgets in the world. The newest. Faster train. They love beautiful things. If something is not first class, Japanese women will not buy it. It must be and it must be the best. And they don't have a whole lot of things in their homes, but whatever they have is quality. They love flowers. They surround their life with flowers. They ask you, you build a house, plant a tree, plant flowers. Find some way in your house where you can also plant crops inside your house and outside your home. Think about that. Go and see nature. Spend more time with nature. Use nature to create things. They are excited about new food, new this, new that. When are we going to start to be like that? Japan has no natural or mineral resources. They don't have nothing. All they have is earthquakes. But yet, they are the third richest nation of the world. They look into their brain. They are war people. They love warfare. And they've translated warfare to science, technology, investment, the new, the new religion, and the new agenda of the world, the new language of the world. People might not like your religion. They might not like you personally. But... You are involved in science and technology, you are creating something. Or in investment, people rally around you. Because you are an open door for them to make money. You are an open door for them to create a life. I choose to follow culture of life and not a culture of death. For example, in Japan, if you are caught as a leader in the House of Representatives or Senate, or as a Prime Minister, as a President of a nation, if you are caught telling one lie, if you are caught doing something that is not part of the Constitution, they come right down to the White House and handcuff you and take you straight to jail. You are going to save between five to seven years. That's why when some of them, in fact, Samantha, you know this, the guy that was working with, um, I think he was the leader of Nissan. He, he was in charge of Nissan and some other companies like that. They discovered one mistake. You are going to jail. That's why the guy ran away. He found people to help, to help fly him out of the country because he will be on his way to jail. They don't waste time. It's not what we are doing here in America. You must choose if you are going to have riches that will stand the test of time. You must choose decency, decent people, people of character. Don't waste your time with people who hate, people with hatred, people with race racial problems. You don't need it. Avoid it. 
Avoid all forms of racial. When somebody begins to talk to you from the point of race, avoid them. Oh, you are African American. You should help me because I'm African American. That's even the more reason why I will not help you. Because you are not speaking to my sensibility. You are not speaking to my emotion of decency. You are speaking to my emotion of hatred for other cultures. That's what you are doing. You are trying to tell me that people of European descendants are bad people. And yet I am kept alive here by people of European descendants from New York. A Lutheran doctor from New York. And all along the same people, the same people of European descendants have made me to who I am. They train me in practical training here in America. I didn't pay a dime. And you want me to hate them. For what reason? Every human being is the same. Human behavior is the same in every race. You must choose to align yourself with people who are decent and good. And they mean it. I like, I like people like Anthony Bourdain. I like people like Steve Owens of Australia. Anthony Bourdain of the United States. There is a guy that died many years back and I cried for months. He was the first one to introduce to the world world music on BBC. Every Saturday night, I'll be waiting for it to be 12 midnight and then he will start his program. I'll bring you his name whenever I remember it. Great, great, great guy. I choose people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Elon Musk. I choose people like that. Steve Jobs of Apple. I choose people like that. I choose great companies, great corporations that also do not just spend their money within themselves, but spend it globally to help civil. I discovered early that I am a world citizen. I'm, I, am, I am a world citizen. Limiting me to African American group or African group or to European group or European American, Middle Eastern, all this and to all this religion is not healthy for me health wise. It's not good for me. It's very bad for me. I won't achieve much if I am given just one group or just two groups. I need all of them. I need the Caribbeans because my life as a child was shaped by their music. I grew up wearing American clothing and shoes. And listening to VOA. So for me, America become the ultimate experience. And I started speaking since I was young because of all the things that was going on that everybody was saying about it. I said, that is the land where I'm going to make an impact. And that's the life, we, that's the land where I will go back to heaven will be from that place. If I step in there, I will not go back to where I come from. I will look back on it. I will never go back. You must choose tonight the country that you are willing to be a part of and you must defend it. I choose America. I choose not to be a part of angry and violent people. You saw when they were doing Black Lives Matter last year. Every one of you, you knew. I said one thing. Don't join them. Tell your children not to join them. I don't like that. You don't use that. You don't, you don't use violence and protest and all of that. You don't solve a problem through it. 
you do it through negotiation. But I also know the problem with negotiation that there are people who don't want to negotiate with you. There are people who are offended, betrayed, beaten, who do not want no negotiation anymore. And there are people who should negotiate with them and they made it worse. I don't have no bitterness or hatred for Donald Trump because it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't profit me nothing. The man does not profit me anything. Neither him or those who follow him, nor his family members, is of no profit to me. The only thing that I have against him was this. He wasn't qualified to be my president. He wasn't prepared for it. Those who put him there did not prepare him. He scammed them and make them believe that he was qualified. That's all I have against him. He's a good salesman, but he's not a good businessman. He's a trash talker. He's a trash talker. He ruled by, I have, I have a, 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 an assessment of how people do leadership. His own is part of what we call Leading through creating conflict. Because that's how lions and wolves and dogs, listen to the animals that I've mentioned, lions, wolves, dogs, hyenas, tigers, cheetahs, pumas, cougars, all these animals, they, they, they get their food through creating conflict and confusion. Violence everywhere. A lion pounces, come out of the bush, kill everybody, everybody's on the run. And in that confusion, one is taken and they sit down and have a meal. That is his kind of leadership. You do it through conflict. Where there is no conflict, they cannot rule. Where there is no problem, they cannot be leaders. And that is bad leadership. And that's all I have. I don't like those kind of leadership. Because people die and the leader doesn't care. Lions don't care if the buffaloes or wild beasts, the, the zebras, they run and hit each other and die in the front. They don't care. That's all I have against the man. I don't like him. I don't hate him. I don't know him. Even if he was a Democrat, it would still be the same thing. Because I'm not a Democrat. I'm not independent either. I'm not. I'm a man of decency, good character. I have good intention. I have right motive. I have good conscience. That's how God is. You don't you don't judge people. You you don't you don't keep quiet because they are your race. No, you don't. You all have seen what I've said about TD Jacks or Creflo Dollars and all, all the African American pastors. And all the other African pastors around the world who all they want is money for themselves. Ask me what they have done for people over the years. Nothing. What institution have they created over the years? Nothing. Did I attack them? Yes, I did. I choose to surround myself with decent people and good people. That's all. I choose to see the good side of human beings. That's all. Somebody wants to make you rich and those who are going to make you rich without you being sick 
without you being a slave to them, without you being afraid of them. I don't want anybody to give you money and then you can't say your mind. You are afraid of your very life, like drug dealers do. They don't know who will betray them. They don't know when the police will come. They don't know when the other group will come shooting at them. I don't want you to have that kind of riches. Riches that you can sleep and have good sleep. And I do not want you to have a job that is like that too. That your conscience is not clean. I, I want you tonight to deal with any shame and guilt. All this I'm telling you this evening is so as to help shape your mind to attract the good things from God himself, to acquire his life and lifestyle, and to attract the right kind of people who sees you for who you are from a profitable point of view not just for themselves but for you and for humanity people who choose to bless you with instructions that will make you rich with money for investment and to solve your personal problems or inheritance people who choose to put your name in their business People who choose to take your dollar and turn it into ten dollars, from ten dollars to a thousand, from ten from from thousand to millions. People who look at you and see the greatness in you, and not people who employ you and see you from the point of weakness. One thing about a lot of businesses is that a lot of businesses employ from the point of weakness. They employ you based on, are you the type that they can cheat? Are you the type that if you take them to court, they will win? That's how they employ you. They employ you based on, if they pay you, if, if they pay you $10 an hour, you won't complain. You will do all they want. Instead of starting you from 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, because they have the money to pay all of that. And more. I don't like businesses where you've, you've suffered for many years and you go to college. I don't know whether Rosalind is with me tonight because she will identify with me in this. You've gone to college. You've studied, you got your doctorate, you got your master's, you got your baccalaureate, your associate, your diploma, your certification. Instead of that business employing you from the point of your certificate and experiences, they start everybody the same. Doesn't matter what qualification you come with, they don't care. You start from the scratch instead of looking at the experiences you already had instead of looking at the quality of your area of strength instead they start you like a recruit in the military that's not fair why do they do that they are employing you from the point of weakness and not from the point of strength and that is very destructive very, very destructive. Those kind of corporations will never train you and will never promote you and you can never be rich with those kind of people. That's why those of you who are still being paid 10 to $20 an hour, my desire in life, and I'm asking God to help me put the package together, so that when I execute it, I execute it well. Mary, you know what I'm talking about, and Vivian, and Lizzie, and Roslyn. The reason yes. is this, yes. The reason is this. 
when people employ you from the point of how they can maneuver you, manipulate you, they will never train you. And they will never promote you. And my desire is to promote you, make you rich, make you prosper. Because if you, if you are employed by other people from the point of whether they can deceive you, whether you are the type that they can easily lie to and who will believe the lie. If they are able to do that, you can never be a millionaire in this lifetime. You will not be able to be one. Why? Because you are dispensable. If everybody, if anybody is like going to work for a seven, is like going to work for 7-Eleven, any bomb can come from the street and work for 7-Eleven. I think you know that. Anybody from jail can become a barber, can cut hair. You, you should know this by now. Any bomb from anywhere who can run the cash register can work for a gas station. This is true. That's why I don't like those kind of jobs. Why? Because it will never promote you. Any job that anybody can do is not your job. It must be a job that nobody else can do it except you. And they've trained you enough and invested in you enough that they cannot easily let go of you. In fact, they will never let go of you. If you want to know what a job looked like, read the life of Joseph with Pharaoh. You are given the freedom to run your department or to run that company and you are properly rewarded and qualitatively and quantitatively compensated. That's what we mean. Don't settle for somebody who just give you a hundred bucks. Or at the end of the year, they give you a talkie. A Thanksgiving. That's it. And they think they did great for you. And then they give you a quarter raise. That's no job. That's not a job. Or they give you $50. And then they sound it from the, they sound it from the moon. We have given her or him a raise. And you ask how, and me, normally me, I will pick my microphone, then I will shout back into wherever they are calling from, wherever they are announcing their raise they gave to you, whether if they are, if they are sounding that alarm from planet Mars, I will go to, I will go to the moon Titan by Saturn. And I will stand right there because what is in Titan is almost like Earth. I will stand in Titans and I will shout, How much was the raise? Okay. <laughs> I need an answer quick. Tell the whole world the whole damn truth. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and then they go and then they say, Oh no! He says, he says, we don't talk about our race in public. I said, but you've already spoken in public about that you gave the person a race. Tell them the damn truth how much the race is. <laughs> no, they will not tell. They don't want people to know that it was a quarter or 50 cent. When I came to America, I worked for a 7-Eleven and also for a Walmart and also for a Kroger store while I was waiting for my ministry appointment. And the manager came to me, he was so happy. Hey, Idika, you got a raise. You got a raise. Is it really? He was really very, you know, they know how to, they know how to put up a show. Those, those business people, they should be ashamed of themselves. He was putting up such a show. Oh, you got a raise. Here's your, here's, here's your, here's your, here's your, here's your paperwork. Look at it. You got a good raise. Come on. You should be happy. I said, how much is it? He said, take a look. I said, come here. I told, I told the manager, come here. He came. I said, where is the raise in this paper? He said, is the... He, then he pointed at what is circle. 
it was a quarter, 25 cent. I told him, you want me to be happy for 25 cent? Do you know how much I put for this store? And you are smiling and, and shouting that I got a raise. I told him, that's no raise. You expect me to, to be happy over a quarter? And while he was talking, I brought up an envelope sent to me by a good friend of mine, a lady of European descendant. She sent me a check from Wisconsin. And it was $800. So I said, come here, let me show something. So he came. And I said, read, what do this check say? Made out to who? He said, to you. How much? He says, 800 and something dollars. I said, that's what we call a raise. <laughs> I told him, that's a raise right there. So you see that? His mouth dropped. His mouth dropped. He couldn't say what he, he left. So from that time, that man never talked to me. Because I realized, at the end, I realized that they had no union in that company. They had no union. In Kroger, there's no union. Walmart, there's no union. In fact, there was a Chinese man that was the cook in one of the Kroger stores. And he was, he was really jumping because the manager came and lied to everybody that, oh, Walmart uh, stocks went, blew over the roof. And they were all happy. All the idiots there were so happy. As though I did not know anything about stock. I turn my phone and I look at the stock. Walmart stock was down at the bottom of the of the of hell. So I called the manager and said, Come here, why are you lying to these people? He said, Why wouldn't I lie to them? They don't know it. they don't know nothing. That's not the word he used. He used the word S. They don't know an S S H A S H I T. They don't know nothing about you know, it's part of what we are trained to do. He said to me. I know you are educated, but you know these people, they are damned and foolish. They don't know nothing. That's why we employ them. You know, you tell them anything, they'll believe it. That's how I got it. They employ people who will not question nothing, who don't want to know nothing, and you will slave for them like a field slave or like a house slave. And whenever they don't need you, they let you go. And you go and look for another job like that. That's why it's very good for you to specialize, to be a specialist in something like the angels are. That's one thing I like about angels is that every angel is a specialist in one field. There are angels whose job is to kill. There are angels whose job is to bring money. There are angels whose job is hospital business, healing. There are angels whose job is protection. There are angels who deals with dreams. They are all specialists. There are angels whose job is to come to earth and counter human beings and give you the future and shortly begin to happen. They are all specialists. There is no general practitioner. The only thing that they are general practitioners in all living angels is that they are worshippers of Jesus, Holy Ghost, God the Father. That's it. That's what they have in common. Outside that, they have nothing in common. Everyone is a specialist. And you need to learn from angels. If you are going to become rich, if you want the rich to make you rich. I mean, decent, nice people to become a specialist. Become a specialist. Rosalind is a specialist is in mortgage banking. That's what we are talking about. Anne is a specialist in Norwegian law and tax. 
and Norwegian European banking and finance. That's her specialization. And she works in a major Norwegian bank. That's what we are talking about. You must become a specialist so that nobody can challenge your authority. I look at Joe Biden presidency and you see if he put somebody in this they are authority in that field if he put somebody in that I say okay this man might get it right this time maybe somebody's gonna get something right who knows let's watch and see you see Matthew was a tax collector Zacchaeus was a tax collector but did Jesus give them the portfolio of being in charge of money? No. It was given to Judas Iscariot, who was not just into that system, but was also the best in taking care of money. But he was a greedy person. A thief. But he was a specialist. Not just that he was, he was educated in that field, but also he was street smart in that field. What are you a specialist in? Somebody want to make you rich. But what are you a specialist in? For God to connect you with somebody that is going to make you rich. I say to all of you women, don't go into love. Don't go into relationship. Don't go into marriage until you become a specialist in something in life. Don't go into any man's house. Don't enter into any man's life with only a luggage, a suitcase, and that's it. And there was nothing you brought on the table. Because the same man who is telling you, I don't want you to have a job. I want you to be the mother of my children. That man is going to change. You should know this for a fact. Humans do change. They will change their promises. That's why you should always bring something to the table that is huge. This is where I disagree with Boaz anointing. There's nothing like Boaz anointing. Instead, I believe in Naomi's and Ruth's anointing. I believe in the anointing. Ruth's anointing. That's what I believe in. I believe in Joseph's anointing. I believe in Abigail's anointing. I believe in Hannah's anointing. I believe in Jacob's anointing. I believe in Moses' anointing. We don't hear about those people. Daniel's anointing. That's what I believe in. Ezekiel's anointing. That's what I believe in. I believe in Jesus' anointing. Andrew's anointing. Mary Magdalene's anointing. Those are the things I believe in. Abraham's anointing. Isaac's anointing. Rebecca's anointing. Those are the anointing I believe in. If you, if you want somebody to help you, don't allow somebody to use you. Please, write that down for me as a powerful key. If you want somebody to bless you don't allow anybody to use you put it like that if you want somebody to bless you do not allow anybody to use you because if they can use you they will never respect you God will make you rich without abusing you, using you. Devils cannot make you rich. You should know this. But human being can make you rich, the right kind of human beings. Open your life to riches. 
play your own part. Have good intention in everything. Deal with your guilt. Deal with the, any shame in your life and let it go. Stop judging yourself. Stop feel, feeling guilty about your past. Because it's going to prevent the right people from coming into your life and doing mighty works for you. There are people who are going to be very fond of you. Just because it is you. They will not be fond of anybody else. It's not because you have beautiful skin, beautiful body, you are always young. No. Because they've seen something in you that they've not seen in any other human being. Take care of the way you talk. Take care of your behavior. For example, if you are a moody person, it will be hard for you to be rich or for somebody to come alongside you to make you rich. If you are a judgmental person, it will be very difficult for good people to make you rich and for God to make you rich. If you are a judgmental person, You will scare angels away if you keep judging yourself. Another thing is, how do you take care of your physical, of, 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 your, of your body? How do you dress? How do you dress? How do you smell? How do you smell? How do your home smell? When somebody walk right into my home, the first scent that hit them is a mixture of lavender, rose, jasmine, and lilac. It will hit you. Boom! How do you smell? How do your car smell? How do your feet smell? Let's go there. How is your personal hygiene? You want to become rich? Let's deal with these issues. That's why even though I'm fasting and praying, I make sure that I appear before God looking my best. I try to find things that will make where I'm sitting, where I'm ministering, look the best. You can see, I went shopping last night to make this place look nice where I'm sitting right now. And I spent time to make it look good. I acquired some new, new quick shooting cameras, three of them. I'm going to be testing them tonight because I want the best. If opportunity is given to me, I will get the best in everything. And if no opportunity is, is given to me, I will struggle until I create the opportunity for myself. That is the message. That's the word from God that I'm sharing with you tonight. God has people that have been put together for you before you came to the earth. You have to ask him to release them. That you are ready. And put yourself together. Don't just fall for any cheap person. Don't just fall for anybody. Don't do it. Because people who are not ready will destroy you. People who are dealing with not accepting themselves will destroy you. People who are making excuses for themselves and excuses for other people will destroy you. Get yourself prepared and ready. And then the people whom God has put together and earth has put together for you will come. 
Because you need to stop becoming a baby mama to drug dealers and to pimps. They should not be making babies out of you. Where are you living in a ghetto instead of living in a gated community? The same G. Either you live in a gated community or you live in a ghetto. Either you live in luxury or you live in misery. Please write that down. It's very nice for me. That's a powerful key. Either you live in luxury or you live in misery. Somebody wants to make you rich. Are you ready? God wants to make you rich. And it's not going to come through that you pray a lot. You read the Bible a lot. It's because you're able to put all these things together that I've been saying. And that's going to attract God. Beauty attracts God. The right kind of mindset attracts God. Your openness to supernatural phenomena attracts God. You believe that God is mighty and he's at work for you, attract God. You stand by what God told you from the word go, it attract God. You make a contract with God, you sign a contract with God, and you stand by it. And whoever comes alongside to tell you something contrary to that, you don't accept it, that attract God. If you choose to see the world as a one little community, you will start attracting the right kind of people and attracting God, and they will make you rich. Don't wait for somebody to tell you you are beautiful. Make yourself beautiful and accept your beauty. Put yourself together. Don't wait for nobody's compliment. Compliment yourself first. Say to yourself, I did it. I succeeded. Long before anybody said that to you. If you do not accept yourself for what you are worth, nobody will accept you for who you are. Please write that powerful key exactly the way I say it. If you do not accept yourself for what you are worth, nobody will accept you for who you are. Because both God and humans, good human beings, they want to see what you got. And they want to see whether you have accepted yourself. Have you accepted yourself? You have accepted Jesus? Or the question is, Annie, are you listening tonight? Where is my Annie? Have you accepted yourself? For what you are worth and for who you are. I tell people who want to be my friend, and when they come to me, all they want to do is drink or talk politics and so on. I told them, I don't need you. I want people who, when they are with me, they, we are discussing things that will create wealth, that will create happiness. And not people who come to waste your time and waste your resources. You are ready to become rich. 
some people, somebody, and God himself are ready to make you rich if you are ready. Don't believe anybody. Don't believe anybody just because they say they love you. Don't believe anybody just because they say they want to help you. Because they might be con artists. They might be rapists, abusers, all kind of stuff. Don't believe what they say. Look at what they do. God has put together somebody to make you rich. The king was prepared for Esther. And Esther prepared herself for the king, for that person, for the for that king. A king was prepared for Joseph. And Joseph prepared himself to meet that king. I hope you are getting it. A nation in crisis was crying for some for a deliverer. They were crying to God for God himself to come and deliver them. And Moses was preparing himself unknowingly. And God went and told him, okay, you are ready. Whatever you didn't finish, I'll finish it. Head back home. To go and start what you start. To go and finish what you started. <laughs> ha! Go and finish what you started. I want you to begin to pray. And bef before before you pray, I'm going to ask the question because I want to make sure that this has this has really really you got it right. I'm going to ask one question. Your answer is going to determine how you should pray tonight. What did God say to you tonight? Just for you. Anybody? What did God tell you? And what did the Chimera tell you tonight? What did you pick out? Let's make sure that we got it right. And then we start praying and then we go. And go and start our weekend. Each person you have to tell me, then you then you wait until everybody's done, then we start praying. And then when you are satisfied with your prayer, you go home. I um I learned that um if I don't prepare to be wealthy, to be rich, I'm wasting my life, I'm wasting my time. There you go. Thank you. Next. That if I want someone to bless Vivian go, Vivian go. V girl. Yeah, if I want someone to bless me, don't allow them to use me. There you go. If they use me, they'll never respect me. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, big baby. Thank you. I call her big baby. But when you really see her, she's not big. She's not big. <laughs> yeah. mm. She's among those women that doesn't want to grow old. Doesn't want to grow old. Every year young. All right. Next person. Leon, I heard your voice. I know your voice. Yay. Yes. yes. One thing you said is not only to watch your words to yourself, but watch. You, you said this before, that sometimes things don't register. But watch what you're saying about others, to others, and don't judge people. Yes. Don't love them. Don't judge them. Love yep. them. Love them. Love them. Yep. But don't be stupid. Yep. When you. Can somebody write this powerful key for me from what she's saying? Don't be stupid in love and in your generosity. 
Don't be stupid in love and in your generosity. I love it. Don't be stupid in love. And don't be stupid in your generosity. Make sure you put it the same thing. Don't be, let's put it this way, Vivian, you are the, and Samantha. Don't be stupid in love and don't be stupid in your generosity. Woo! Tell me about it. Don't be stupid in love and don't be stupid in, in your generosity. Yeah, don't be. Hi, yay, yay. I'm I'm saying it like a Caribbean person tonight. Woo! Ay, yay, yay. <laughs> Leona, thank you, thank you, thank you. Long live people from Oklahoma. I know. Oh my gosh, you just need to see them. You just need to see them shaking it down. There you go. Uh huh. Yep, Leona, have you ever seen have you ever seen the Caribbean girls in England during the summer festival in, in downtown London? I don't know whether Uzo is with us tonight and Beatrice. Where is my Beatrice? Uza, you are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I love Uza. He's a great guy. Yeah. So so Uza, that's I'm speaking like a, a like an English person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> where is Beatrice? Beatrice, where are you? Okay. So you see, huh? During the uh, during the um, the Caribbean people celebrate during summer in in downtown London, um, uh, one one of the great musicians that plays during that time is Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant will play. Um, he's from Caribbean, I think. So yeah, he plays some of his good 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 music. And then uh, there is there is a music that people really when you see the Caribbean girls and women dancing to this music oh my gosh they will put everybody to shame they those people can dance you remember that song oh my commanding wife she want to destroy my life uh -huh. ah, 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 oh ah, 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 eh -huh. yeah so yes yeah, so i had a doctor's friend i have a doctor friend he is an oncologist oncologist he treats um cancer so he is from the caribbean and the wife was a lawyer the wife is a lawyer and so i think they were going through a separation or something like that so when the man come back so one day one day he invited me to come to his house and have supper with them and then and the man went and put that music oh my commanding wife she want to destroy my life uh-huh Ah, 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 and the wife turned around and the wife and the wife looked at me and the wife started to sing oh my commanding horse that's husband he want to destroy my life uh -huh. and the wife left the eating the, the dining table and she started to shake her caribbean butt all over the place oh my commanding husband he want to destroy my life uh -huh. Ha 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 and the husband began to sing every day and every night I pray that this diner will go away ha ha and the wife said you will go first ah ah you came first ah ah go first ah ah and I just look at I just say wow these people they've made a mess of marriage oh my gosh. I couldn't I couldn't eat the food. Oh. I could I wonder how they are able to live like that and they are able to eat and the food stays in their stomach. I wonder. I couldn't take it. Not me. I mean the the, the husband couldn't dance. So when the wife let it go, you will know that that is a real dance. You know? The husband couldn't keep up because she was also somebody that was loud and can, you know, a lawyer and can fight. She's the type of lawyer who, if she handles your case, you are going to win. No way, you will. 
you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. FYI, Eddie Grant is from Barbados. Eddie Grant is from Barbados? Yeah. You are kidding me. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. I have always loved Eddie Grant. The first music mm -hmm. of Eddie Grant that I heard was Electric Avenue, you know? Uh -huh. oh, yeah. He is from Barbados? Yeah. Wow, he is... He is one of the most famous musicians in the world whose music is used for carnivals all over the world. Yes, that's Eddie Grant. And there was another song of him, um, Romancing the Stone, and this one that says, they are inviting me to a war party. We don't want to go. He's not, I mean, beautiful. All his songs are world class. That's the first musician that I've ever seen that all his songs are serious they are also very nice and all of them are classic every song of his that's the first not not a song for it's not a song for jokers or for comedians these are serious music and if you see people dancing to his music during summer festival oh my gosh <laughs> yeah. He, he was he was born of Guyanese parents. Okay. Um, and he lives in he lives in Barbados. He has a beautiful home in Barbados. Okay. Is he alive? Yeah. I think he's still alive. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. I think he I think he 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 lived most of his life in London. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Barbados has great people. My goodness. Yeah. He has British citizens. Yeah, he has British citizens. Is is Rain is it Rayma or Reina? Uh the one that sings um what is that? Uh, I'm worth it. I think she's also from Barbados. Rihanna. Uh, Rihanna, yeah. Rihanna. Yeah. She's yeah, she's also from Barbados. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that's serious. That's serious. Yeah. So why is Saint Lucia has literature and Nobel Prize winners in literature? Barbados has them in music and in government. Gosh, that's something. That's serious. That is really really serious. I didn't know Eddie Grant was from Barbados. God, this is comforting to know. He lives in Barbados. Okay. Yes, beautiful home, yeah, because I've been wondering what what part of Caribbean is this guy from. I couldn't tell. Now, now I know. This is this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. makes me. This yeah. makes my day. Yeah. Cool. He's a very decent man of reputable character. I'm telling you. Nice people. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice man. Okay, so. So somebody else, what what have you learned tonight? Uh, not to not to believe what people say and what what they do. That is, don't believe the part. Believe they do the, the work. There you go. There you go. Vote for APC. Vote for PDP. Don't believe them. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Don't believe none of them. Don't. Yep, yeah, because they are coming to chop money. You know? Juma Bell chop money. You know? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Who again? Funny it is. I used to focus my mind. I used to focus my mind on the good side of life. There you go. I like that, baby girl. I like that. And then enjoy good experience. Enjoy good experience. Wow. That is big. That is really, really big. That's why when you see very, very rich people, the billionaires, those who own multinational companies, intercontinental, you always see that they choose they, they are not just top class business people. They have other avenues of enjoying life. They have it. They choose to see the beautiful side of life. 
And there is something I want to reveal to all of you tonight. If you are a busy person and you decide to specialize in one thing in life that is bringing you income, one thing in life that you are good at doing, very good, that money, money, money is in it and it is in money. If you choose to focus your mind also on the good side of life, on good experience. Remember? Remember what the Holy Spirit told us? That we are in this earth to have good experience. I love that more than anything. I just love it. If you choose to focus like that, there is no devil. There is no witchcraft that can touch you. None. You know the reason? Because you are focused. The most important word in the dictionary is focus. Concentrate. Concentrate. Concentrate on something good. If you focus, no witchcraft can stop you. No devil can stop you. No disease can stop you. No sickness can stop you. None. Focus. Next person. Roslyn, did you were you saying something? I was getting ready to say exactly what Mary said, but uh, she beat me to it. However, um, one other thing that um, that stood out to me is um, you have to, like you say, you have to stay focused. You have to have a mind of your own and don't listen to persons coming with the sweet talk, oh, I love you, and you know, and that crap. Mm -hmm. and you get into a relationship, whatever you're getting into a relationship, like for example, always be ready to take something to the table. Always have something to take to the table. Good. Don't just go, um, don't go empty-handed or willy-nilly, or like you say, with a suitcase. Yep. You you believe in either with the same suitcase or without the suitcase for that. Yep. Reason. Yep. You came with two legs, and by the time you leave, you are living with only one. There you, go. you know, oh, yeah. you came with all your teeth intact, looking white and clean, and you are living with four of the teeth gone. Uh huh. You came with you came with all your hair looking good. You know your head. You are thinking good. You live with you. You live a mad man or a mad woman. Crazy. You know you came with your head looking nice. By the time you leave, you leave with stitches because your head was busted with a beer bottle. Since since you don't want to listen to him, you know you don't want to listen to him. They get your head busted, or since you did not want to listen to her, you know. And the and the lady says, since you don't want to shut up your big old mouth, she take that beer bottle that you are you are drinking the beer. She takes it and hit you on the head. Boom! Say so now you can hear it. Since you don't want to listen, you can now feel it, and you live with a busted head. Uh huh. You live with a busted head. And there are some women, you know, like those humongous girls. They are big in body. Body size, they are tall. And the man is just a little, little dwarf. And he's running his mouth. And they tell you all you are good at is running your big old mouth. And the girl hits you. Boom! Kick you. And tell you, next, come, come and get it. And you look at how tall she is and how big and how humongous she is. You, you, you make for the door. Enter your car and you drive away. You don't come back. You want to come and fight in court to come and take the house. She tell you, come. You think I'm going to leave this for you? And by the time that she has beaten you two, three times, you know that the game is up. That You, you don't need to come back. And that in reality, she is really my commanding wife. Your Excellency, 
the commander in chief of this marriage. She tell you I've been respecting you and making you the fufu head of this marriage is over. Now I take over. Game over. Move over. <laughs> so you are the one now living with a suitcase. Game over. Move over. Yeah. And another thing that stood out to me was, um, you know, don't don't sit back and wait for somebody to tell you that you look good. Make yourself look good. There you and go. The importance of, of of proper personal hygiene. Yep. And and I would I would add to that not just the personal hygiene. You have to take care of your body, not just on the outside but on the inside. Yep. You know. You know, you you have to take care of you, and you have to make yourself presentable. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you when you are presentable, opportunities are gonna come your way. There you go. There you go. Next person. Um, one thing that stood up to me was um, to avoid anything that is like racially motivated. Mm hmm But God, God hates that. Good. That's Christina. Christina, did you get my voice message? I haven't. I got home not too long ago, so I, I was just settling in. I haven't listened to my voice message yet. Okay, you owe me 10 bucks for not listening oh. to my voice message. Just 10. That's okay. I love you more than 10. <laughs> Okay, call call me after the service. I'm waiting for your call. Okay. Okay. I, I will want to make those decisions with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Next person. No, 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 you say what? God will not move on this road. God will not move unless you are ready. Can somebody write that as a powerful key for us? God will not move for you unless you are ready. Make sure you put it that way. God will never move for you unless you are ready. Period. And then continue. People who will make you rich will not move for you unless you are ready. Make sure you, you put them, they are the same thing. They are they all is in, in the same thing. Vivian, Vigal, you know how to do that. Yes, I'm doing that. Good. People too will not, will not move for you. People who are supposed to make you rich will not move for you unless you are ready. Have you seen Shark Tank? See all those ladies with Kevin. Uh, is Kevin Mr. Wonderful? And um, Mark Cuban. And the, I don't know the name of that African-American guy. I don't know his name. Um, on Shark Tank. The, the one that has like a, an ear, ear. What is it? Um, diamond on his ear. Something like that. He's always buying businesses. So I don't know his name. Um... Do you see that those who are not prepared, those who come to Shark Tank to come and ask for money, to come and ask for their expertise, for their businesses, you see that those who are not prepared with their figures, they don't know what they are doing. They have not made any sale. Nothing. And they just come out there to come and look for, you see, they don't get nothing. They hardly get anything. If they are not ready, if they are not prepared, they don't get nothing. That's just the way it is. Why? Because those guys tell you that they are there to make money. They are not there to listen to your story. So you have to be ready. All right, somebody else, help us. Somebody else, tell us. So if you want rich people to make you rich, or another word for making you rich is invest in you. You must be ready. You must you must get you must get yourself together. If you keep telling them stories, they will avoid you. 
Please listen to me. If you keep telling people stories, they will avoid you because you've not put yourself together. That's just the way it is. And sooner or later, people will begin to think that you are a con artist. Yeah. So you better put yourself together before you start presenting yourself that you are looking for this, you are looking for that. Put yourself together. Get, get yourself ready. Somebody want to make you rich. That's why we broke it down. We brought it to the way things are in this world and not just a Bible-based principles that sometimes people don't know even how to apply them. Next person. Thank you, Uzo. That's pretty good. Thank you, Roslyn. Leona, thank you. I want, to, I, I want to jump in here again. Something you um, said just know that really hit, um, brought something to mind. You have to have self-confidence and you have to know your worth. Good. If you don't have self-confidence, nobody will even trust you. If you don't have self-confidence, what you are doing is absolute rubbish. You have to know that self-confidence. Because with self-confidence, you'll be able to make major decisions and stand by those decisions. That's, that's all. And that's one of the things that we learned in the last administration with Trump. He doesn't have self-confidence. He can make no major decision for the nation. And that's also the way he has run the businesses that he got. And they are either dissolved, they go bankrupt, or they close. When he's needed to make a decision, he can't. Why? He wasn't prepared for this. It was a shield. And sometimes I feel I feel so much pity that that's who he is. I just really feel so much pity that that's the way he has allowed because I think he doesn't listen to anybody. That's the problem too. That's another thing that we have to bring out. If you want to be rich and your riches will endure, you must learn how to listen to experts, professionals. Professionals. And then get out of Get out from their face. Don't stand in their face and try to tell them what to do. They have to tell you what to do and you do it. That's why I like George Bush Sr., a Republican president of this nation. He will always call an expert in anything that he doesn't know. Before he make a major announcement, the last few days or week, he has called experts and they will come to the White House and educate him in that field. And then he will ask them to go and speak to the nation that he is behind them. He won't show up. That's what we call a leader. Not somebody who doesn't, because, I mean, I go to some, some, some leadership training, and you will see somebody who doesn't know nothing about a particular area of life, and he will tell you, there's nobody in this room that knows this thing more than I do. I'm serious. I remember one of the leaders teaching us and saying this to us, oh my God, God forgive. God forgive them. For they know, in fact, God will not forgive them, because they know exactly what they are doing. He won't forgive them. They know exactly what they are doing. This is what he was teaching us. People from Texas. This is what they were teaching us. You see, in politics, in church business, in your, in, in your personal corporation, in, in your corporation, limited liability company, you know, in making money, in being a leader of any type, including being a world-class leader, even if you don't know that thing, lie to the people. Tell them that there's nobody who knows it more than you. And if they ask you a question pertaining to that field, begin to tell them stories. 
Really, that's what they were teaching. Begin to teach them, to tell them stories. Some of that, if they praise you for that, you tell them that you, you, will, you don't want to lose your train of thought, that you will, you will go there, and you never go there. Very wrong teachings that they do. Never admit that you don't know anything about an area that you don't know anything. That's what they teach you. Never admit. And the next thing they teach you, I was there listening. And the next thing they teach you is even if you fell in something or somebody is better than you, never accept that somebody is better than you. That's what they teach. If there is an election, I was there listening. If there is an election and they put somebody in, fight that person. Lie to the people. I was there listening. So it wasn't a surprise to me what happened about two or three weeks ago in America. Because that's what they teach. Don't ever accept that you lose. They tell you to fight till you die. Do anything to win. That's what they teach. I was there. I heard it with my own ears. Where you should lie to them, lie to them. It's not a sin. That's what they teach. And when I left that meeting, I took the notes, I took, I took the brochure, the books, the handouts, all the teaching materials. As I left the room, immediately I enter my hotel room. I look for the nearest big trash can outside the hotel and I went there and I tore it I tore the book I tore the book into two three parts I broke it and I put it in the trash can and all the brochure everything from that meeting I put it in that trash can including the pen that they gave for, for me to write to write things that they are telling you I took everything, put in a trash can, and I took my briefcase, and I went to my hotel room. And that was the end of that. They teach you how to borrow money from the bank, and you can also sue the, the bank. They teach you how when people give you the money, you can cheat them. And a, a lot of these people are some of the big preachers you see on television. That's what they teach. That's how they scam people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the politicians in Washington, D.C., they, they belong to those groups. I've been there. So I'm telling you, when you see me saying something, it's because I, am, I have been there. I see the way they do it. People who vote for election, church folks, are very stubborn. And because they are very stubborn, you have to devise a way to get the money from them. Because they don't, they don't want to make you rich. They are envious of you, of your education. They are envious of your status as a leader. So get the money anyway from them. Lie to them. Tell them whatever they should hear that will motivate them. Put emotion on them and let them bring that money. And when they say it, they look at everybody and they say, damn it. Now God is in heaven. He's not on earth. That's what they say. <sighs> so I'm not surprised. That's what they teach. If people loan you money, make sure you don't give it back to them. If you borrow money to buy a house from a bank or to buy a plane, make sure you don't pay for it. Fight them in the court. Waste their days in the court. Pay a good lawyer. Lawyers don't have money. So hire one and give them a little bit and they will waste the time of those who, who loan you money of your investors until they are worn out and go crazy or they just leave you alone. That's what they teach. So some of you have not opportunity to go to some of these some of these places to listen to what they teach then you will not be surprised at what is happening in politics or in church
or in business. You wouldn't be surprised. None of those things surprises me. There's nothing anybody's going to do that will surprise me because I know what they teach. So when somebody said to you, oh, stop the steal, they stole the election, I know exactly what it means because I've been in the school where that man teaches himself because that's what they tell you. Never agree that you fell. Never show weakness. Even if you are sick, hide it. Don't let anybody know that you are sick. Show, show that you are strong. Show your strength even when you are not strong. Put up a show. These are not new things. This is being taught in America. <laughs> That's why when people call me and they tell me, Oh, pastor, eh, prophet or bishop or doctor, eh, we want you to come and invest in our company, you know. church for Some church folks are investing in it, you know, and um, it's making them good money and so on. I say, yeah, let me think about it. You know, I'll get back to you. Never. I'll never get back to them. Because you give them that money, gone. They are church folks, people that we know. They are all on television. And they are all thieves with the Bible. They are all thieves with the Bible. Thieves in the Senate, thieves in the House of Representatives. Yeah. It's, 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 it's something. A lawyer will have solved your problem a long time ago, but they are, some of them are trained to do the dirty, dirty way to make sure they prolong it in order to get more money from you. So by the time you finish having a divorce, you spend over 100000 just to get a divorce. To get a divorce in the state of Kansas is like 70 bucks. $70. You meet the bad lawyer, you are done. <laughs> you will be you will be you will be dealing with a divorce for the next 10 years. I'm serious. By the time they finish, the lawyer has become very wealthy from your money. Who who wanna go next? What did you learn? Somebody. Yeah, we are listening. Who was that? This is Anne in Brooklyn. Yeah, Anna. Anne, where have you been? Where have you been? Talk to us. I, 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 sent, I sent you an email. Uh, an email. I sent you a um, WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to look at it. Tell, tell us, what did you learn? Uh, tonight, to stay the course. Stay focused. Be confident. Good. And when I said that, because as we were speaking, I got a text message from a new client. Uh huh. And uh, basically, I know that I already have the job, but it's telling me just be confident and to stay focused because the doors are opening up. Okay, and also no, and also no, Anne of Brooklyn, you have to stay focused. Yours is even. The, the, the most important reason why you should even stay focused is, is because you are from Barbados. So too bad for you. <laughs> Those from Barbados are not saying anything. You are from Barbados. So if you don't become rich and famous, too bad. Because, if, because a lot of people have come from Barbados and they have made it. And now Barbados is known all over the world. Barbados is known for famous people, wealthy people, world-class people. You you go to Las Vegas, Fifth Avenue, you see big fashion and cosmetics from people from Barbados. So that's why, whether you like it or not, Anne of Brooklyn, you are gonna make it in life. You must become rich, and not only that, you are also, it's not just that because you're from Barbados, it's also because you are an American. And it's also worse for you is because you have me. So, so three big gates right there in front of you. Come on, that's big for you. There are, there are people 
also waiting on me to make a decision. Um, well, especially going forward. So, thank you, God. Well, the point is, you have to move forward for every other person to follow you. And also, what the job you are doing now, people want to see people want to see you making headway in that business for them to come alongside you and help make you rich that's what it is next person exactly there you go there you go there you go next person barbara yay the girls are up tonight the girls are here <laughs> <laughs> The king was prepared for Esther, and Esther's going to be prepared for the king. What did you say? The king was prepared for Esther, and Esther's going to be prepared for her king. Okay. For her king. How do you turn that into business principle? Put it in business for me, so that I can understand you. Put it in business and in money. <laughs> A king is prepared for Esther, and Esther is prepared for a king. Um, Esther is going to be prepared for a king because she's going to have her own business. So when she meets her king, he'll be uh, right on each other. Uh, what about what about Esther having her business first? Then the king sees the business and come alongside it. What about that principle? What happened to that? That will work out though. Well, that's the main thing. Because what you are talking about is Boaz anointing kind of principle, and I don't like that. I want to see an Esther that is ready made. I want an Esther that is ready made. Okay. That's, that's the real thing that we were talking about tonight. People who are standing on their own foundation first and foremost. Reason? If anything happened along the way, with people that you've come to trust to make you rich. If anything happened to them, you can't lose your foundation. Please make sure everybody you get that. The reason why you must have your foundation first and not depend on whatever anybody tells you, whatever anybody promises you is in case something happened to those people and you still have your own foundation to stand. Everything everyone are going to do for you to make you rich is to help set you up and then you can make your own lifestyle out of that that's it next person barbara did you get it, I got it. i'm standing with you i'm standing with you girl next person okay thank you good um i'd say the point of tonight would be you need to become a specialist in something mm -hmm. so that you can be rich so that people won't try to challenge your authority as you go through life. There you go. And that is why I said that I don't want people to challenge my authority in Spanish. And I need my personal secretary to speak fluent and write fluent Spanish. That's it. So that I can I can I can break into the into the into the Spanish speaking community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are a good girl. Next person. Now everyone, let's remain silent. And then I'm going to pray. And then after that, pray as the Spirit of God leads you. If you want to pray in the Spirit, we call it tongue. That's fine. Eternal Father, we have learned something. We are prepared, are going to be prepared from this night for riches to come to us and for us to create riches for ourselves or for others to help us create riches. Come alongside us and give us the precious gift of riches precious gift of wealth so that our head will be held high so that our life will be precious to you and to other human beings 
so that we will become socially and personally relevant. God, we do not want to fail in life. Do not allow us. Now everybody begin to pray. Begin to pray from what you say. From the area that God has touched you, ask God for help. Begin to pray. And when you pray, I didn't say that you should just rush and run away to go and eat. Mm -hmm. Begin to pray. Yeah. When you've prayed enough and you know God has said you, then you can go. Good night. Okay. Have a very wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Start praying. Thank you.